Vision of the graph is f of x equal to sine 3x, which means the period number is going to be 3, and the period of the graph, remember, the period is going to be equal to 360 degrees over b, and b is the coefficient of x there. So for this question, it's going to be 360 degrees over 3, and that gives you 120 degrees. So this 120 degrees is the period of that graph. So after every 120 degrees, the graph will start to repeat itself. All right. So the first question says write down the period of F. The period there is going to be 120 degrees. All right. It's 120 because the period number B is equal to a 3. All right. So that's the first part. Then the next part says, write down the solutions for sine 3x equal to minus 1 on the interval from minus 90 to 180 degrees. Alright, so by this, the question is saying, determine values of x such that the y values of f of x are equal to negative 1. So if you go to the graph, our y is minus 1 there. Now, I just need you to be aware of this, that if the equation is f of x equal to sine 3x, and this question is saying sine 3x is equal to minus 1, what this means is that this sine 3x is the same as that sine 3x. It therefore means that f of x will be equal to minus 1. So this is the same as saying f of x is equal to minus 1, which means y is equal to minus 1. So what values of x are, are there where y is equal to minus 1? So you go to your graph, minus 1 is here, so we have got x equal to minus 30, and we have got x equal to 90 degrees. So your two answers for 10.2 will be x equal to minus 30 degrees or x equal to 90 degrees. Are you following this so far? Let's move on to the next one now. It says give the maximum value of h. Now h is a new graph that you get if you move f of x by one minute down. That's what this means. H is a new graph that you get if you shift f of x by one unit downward. So what that means is the maximum points they are going to move one unit down to this point, and this point will move to that point. This point here it moves to to negative two. That point moves to negative two. So the question is saying give the maximum value of the new new graph H after moving f of x by 3 units down. I'm sure you can see that the maximum value is here. If it moves 1 unit down, it gets to 0. Because at this point, y is 0. So the maximum value is going to be uh, a 0. So the maximum value will be equal to 0. The minimum is going to become negative 2 because of the vertical shift of the graph of sine 3x. Alright? So my suggestion here, if you want to work it out, in fact, if just by writing the answer, you will get your full mark. Or what you can do, you can also substitute. So you see, h of x equal to f of x minus 1. This is the same as saying, sine 3x minus 1, right? The amplitude of sine 3x, it's, it's a 1. So if you want to get the maximum value, you can just subtract 1 from, so subtract 1 from the amplitude and you get 0. Okay, so you could do it that, uh, that way. But, uh, the best way is just to 
use your uh, your brain in terms of interpretation of the vertical shift. The maximum is at one, so if you move it down, it gets to zero because you are moving it by one unit downwards. All right, so that will be straightforward. And then the next question it says, okay, you're supposed to sketch the graph of sine three x, right? So I sketched with my computer the graph of sine three, oh sorry, of three sine cos x, three sine cos x, the blue one. So here you're supposed to sketch the graph of g of x equal to three cos x. That's the blue one. Then. The black one, that's the one we had initially, we put x equal to sine 3x. Right. So the question now is, do you know how to sketch using the table as I taught you? You have to know that. Right? You just need to know how to use your calculator to sketch the graph. That is, the calculator will do a table for you and then you just have to plot the points. If the question involves horizontal shift, right? I think tomorrow that's when I will talk more about horizontal shift as well, just to give you some hints. Um, and uh, I saw uh, one of the questions that I gave you, it involved horizontal shift. Please just sketch the last question on three graphs, then maybe tomorrow we can do uh, an analysis and I'll give you more questions. Right, but for now you're just supposed to sketch uh, g of x equal to 3 cos x between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Now this graph, your step, remember, your step is equal to the period over 4, so you could make your step equal to 90 degrees and the graph will come out. So to sketch g of x equal to 3 cos x is not very difficult. Your step is to be 90 since it's a grade it's a grade 10 graph, okay? The sketching of a graph which involves horizontal shift is slightly more complex because you have to consider the interval that you are given together with the period as well, right? Which I will share with you um, tomorrow. Okay, I'll talk about that one tomorrow because I need to see you face to face because it's more complex, right? So in the meantime, let me carry on with uh, the interpretation. Okay, you had to do that one after sketching. So the question says, use the graphs to determine how many solutions there are to the equation. Right. So after sketching the graphs, after sketching the graphs on the same system of axes, now we need to do an interpretation as to how many times the two graphs intersect or how many solutions are such that the two graphs intersect. But here it's not very straightforward. So you have to manipulate the equation. Okay, so let's manipulate that equation together. So your equation is sine 3x equal to 3 minus cos x equal to 0. Now remember, our f of x is equal to sine 3x and g of x is equal to 3 cos x. So we need to manipulate this equation until we get to a point where we have got f of x equal to g of x. That is sine x equal to 3 cos x. Okay, so it's not very straightforward. Well, the equation is given as that. Okay, so what you have to do is use your knowledge of equations from grade 9 and grade 10. So if I start from there, I'll get sine 3x over 3 minus uh, 3 cos x is it? The initial is not 3 there, so that 3 cos x equal to 0. If I want to get the, the equation for g of x, this one here, right? The best way is to be aware that the denominator there is a 1, the denominator of that 0 is a 1. 
So your LCD is going to be 3. Okay? The objective is to manipulate this equation until I get to a point where I would get to x b equal to g of a. So if I multiply every 10 by 3, I will get sine 3x minus 3 cos x equal to 0. That will be the new equation after I multiply every 10 by the LCD, which is a 3. So your knowledge of how to break uh, fractions is going to be required for you to be able to carry on here. Then we can then isolate the sine 3x by taking the, the minus 3 cos x to the right, and then you get 3 cos x. Now, this 3 cos x is equivalent to g of x, and this sine 3x is equivalent to f of x. Therefore, I can say, therefore, f of x is equal to g of x. So, this question was not asked di directly as determine the number of solutions if f of x is equal to g of x. It was given as this, which is quite common sometimes. Okay? It is also a possibility that you won't get a question directly which is saying, determine the number of solutions or determine the values of x if f of x is equal to g of x. You can be given an equation that you have to manipulate based on the original equations of the graphs. Okay, so we know that for f of x to be equal to g of x, those are points of intersection. Okay, so it's referring to this point, that's number one. Then we have got number two. So we've got two points where the two graphs are equivalent. Okay, but the question is not asking us to determine the actual values of x. He just said determine the number of solutions. That is how many solutions are there, or how many points are such that the two graphs intersect between minus 90 and 180 degrees. So your answer there is going to be a 2. Answer is going to be a 2. And that answer we can see from the two sketches that we have got a point here where f of x is equal to g of x. In here as well, f of x is equal to g of x. Are you following? Determine your answers, and then I'll talk about it just now. You need to know that if you are given the expression f of x times g of x is less than zero, it means the y value for in this case here, for the sine graph times the y value for the cos graph. You multiply them, you get a product that's negative, right? Now, I'm sure you can agree with me that if the product is to be negative, it means one of these two, that is y1 or y2, has to be negative. The other one must be positive. So if you go to the graph, Let's start from minus 90 here, right? Both graphs, okay, in the second quadrant, the graphs, okay, if you start from minus 90 up to minus 60, both graphs are in the second quadrant. So from minus 90 to minus 60 degrees, the two graphs are in the second quadrant, and y is positive for both graphs. Their y values are positive. But as soon as you move to the right of minus 60, the graph of f is now in the third quadrant, which means the y values are now negative. But the y values for the cos graph, which is blue, they are positive. Therefore, our first solution is going to be minus 60 degrees is less than x is less than 0 degrees. So I am here now. I am at the origin now. That's where I am. Between minus 60 and 0 degrees, the y values for the sine graph are negative. But the y values for the cos graph are positive. Therefore, 
the product f of x times g of x will be negative between minus 60 degrees and 60 degrees. Or uh, minus 60 degrees and 0 degrees. So I make the origin. Now, after the origin, the graph of sine is now positive, right? And the graph of cos is still positive. So the graph of sine is positive because it's now in the first quadrant. It's now in the first quadrant until we get to the x-axis, right? Then the graph starts to be negative up to this point. Now, the graph of cos is too positive from this point up to that point where we have x equal to 90 degrees. So, the next solution is going to be if x is between 60 degrees and 90 degrees, the, pro the product of the y values is it's going to be negative. So I am here. I am at 90 degrees here. After 90 degrees, both graphs are negative. Both graphs are negative. Until they become equal, they are still negative. The y, the y values for the cross graph are going to be negative throughout, up to 180. But suddenly, the, the, the y values for the cross graph are becoming positive. So from 20 degrees, to 180 degrees, the y values for the sine graph are positive, but the y values for the cos graph are negative. So the second, the third answer is going to be: we are starting from 120, so it will be from 120 degrees to 180 degrees. The graphs uh, have a product which is negative.